let's talk about chapter 2 measurement and resistance here you can see measurement and resistance this is a pretty big topic to be covered in one video so i will be splitting it up in two or more parts so let's get started here we have resistance pretty basic stuff it is passive element and has ohm as the symbol and voltage when applied causes zigzag motion of electrons hence this is the symbol okay we are used to this then we are having properties as stable time invariant low temperature coefficient low thermoelectric emf high resistivity low frequency error at lower frequencies we have uh, equivalent somewhat like this but a higher frequency leads to some undesirable elements added okay we are trying to reduce this l and c effect okay so for reducing this we have two methods that is bifuller method for reducing the l effect and ariton perry winding for reducing the capacitive effect so in ariton perry winding we are having this ceramic and two wires are wound on it okay this is what it does the two adjacent turns are having some sort of capacitance between them but since these capacitance happen to fall in series the effect is almost negligible okay but this uh, method is quite expensive okay let's see how it is this is how it is this diagram has been depicted by this okay two sets of winding are wound on this ceramic piece okay this is your ariton perry winding used for reducing the capacitive in, uh, effect okay here you are having a capacitor as well so we are trying to reduce this thing okay but this method over here is expensive okay let's move on to bifuller winding in bifuller winding the wire is doubled on itself so wires carry current in opposite direction and produces equal and opposite magnetic fields since these wires are close to each other the net magnetic is magnetic field is zero net inductance is almost negligible so this is how it is this is your bifuller winding okay here the wire is not being cut into two parts okay here we are just doubling the wire on itself it means that these two ends of the wire are is actually a single terminal and we are doing this to reduce the inductive effect okay the unwanted inductive effect that we have over here at higher frequency okay so you have to keep in mind that bifuller method is used for reducing the inductive effect whereas ariton perry winding method is used for reducing the capacitive effect then we have materials used for resistance okay in order to make a resistance we have certain materials used one of them is manganin that is copper manganese and nickel with thermal coefficient as this okay it is pretty low we expect thermal coefficient value to be low okay temperature coefficient of a resistance should be as low as possible okay then we have constant in that is nickel plus copper with this value then we have gold chromium we have nickel chromium alloys okay now we are having some classifications of resistance okay resistance under 1 ohm or equal to 1 ohm is a low resistance okay and medium resistance is defined as anything from 1 ohm to 100 kilo ohm okay and high resistance are always greater than 100 kilo ohm okay now we are going to study how to measure low resistances okay we are going to measure resistance that are less than or equal to 1 ohm okay here we have three methods volt ampere method or a meter voltmeter method kelvin double bridge potentiometer we have here voltmeter ammeter method the formula we are going to use is this okay this is your circuit suppose in case one we are assuming that ammeter is close to the unknown resistance here this is your unknown resistance and the ammeter is close and we are assuming that no current is flowing through the voltmeter okay in this branch no current is flowing so this will be your kvl equation and this will be your measured resistance okay rm is the measured value now error that can happen is given by this formula or this formula or this formula given as per the given data in the question now error is low if rt if you are this particular unknown resistance is very high in comparison to the internal resistance of the ammeter okay if your unknown resistance is pretty much higher than the internal resistance of the ammeter then you have least amount of error let's talk about case 2 what we are having over here is voltmeter is close to the unknown resistance here it is your unknown resistance here it is your voltage okay now let's talk about exact analysis this is how we are analyzing it okay now what we are doing is this is your true value okay 
and this is your measured value so the error is given by this and percentage error is given by this now we are doing the approximate analysis okay as per the given data so and so fashion okay this is the formula you are concerned with 1 upon rv equals to 1 upon measured minus 1 upon unknown resistance okay so we have to we can find out rt by this method okay if we assume that measured value and the unknown resistance value are somewhat same over same then this would be your case the error in that case would be this and the percentage error would be this okay in case you are having measured resistance and the unknown resistance as same okay then these two formulas are applicable now error is low if the unknown resistance is much much lower than the volt uh, voltmeter internal resistance here you see the voltmeter is close to the unknown resistance so we want its uh, internal resistance to be pretty low as compared to this unknown resistance okay then we are having optimum value optimum value of resistance with er is same okay let's assume that in case 1 and case 2 we are having same values of resistance okay in both case the error is having the same value okay error here in both case 1 and case 2 we are having same amount of error then the unknown resistance is given by this formula now we are having kelvin double bridge okay it is modified wheatstone bridge with greater accuracy no current flows through the galvanometer under balance condition product of opposite arms are equal so this is your formula this is your diagram i would suggest you to uh, make sure that you keep in mind the diagrams very well okay you have to practice it many times okay because uh, the diagrams and the derivations have been asked not only in ias mains exam but also in upsc engineering service mains exam as well okay so keep in mind draw diagrams and uh, remember the derivations okay uh, now this formula is having lead, uh, lead resistance but this method is having a benefit you can uh, remove the lead resistance okay this is the formula for that uh, and this method is also having a benefit that it can measure in micro amperes as well okay a very small value can also be measured hence this is very accurate now there is a reversible switch over here you can see reversible switch so thermoelectric emf is eliminated okay now we are talking about potentiometer method okay we will be discussing potentiometer method in the part 2 this is all for part 1 till here